Hi there, friends. Welcome to my Stampin' Peace studio. I'm Mary Nabe, coming to you live from Westerville, Ohio, on Tuesday, July 30th. I cannot believe another month has flown by. It's crazy. But anyways, I hope it's been a good month for you. Um, basically been a good month for me. Um, I got away for two girls weekends. Crazy. I never have that much going on. And Monday through Wednesday next week, I'm going on another girl, girls trip. I'm going to Frankenmuth, Michigan with a friend of mine. So we're really excited and we'll be celebrating her retirement as well. Um, this morning I went to the Ohio State Fair with Andrea and Lil Riley. Um, she, she, we weren't there very long, a couple of hours, but she had fun and, um, was excited to see the animals and they had an indoor, um, like play area for small children with, um, like little playhouses and, and cozy coop cars and street signs and all kinds of things. And she just thought that was the best thing. And uh, especially running in and out of all those little buildings and opening and closing the doors and seeing the other children. So it was fun to go and see. So I'm glad Andrea asked me to go along. Um, I do want to mention before we get to today's project, which today's project is using the Choose Happy stamp set. Um, I'll tell you about that more in a moment. But I did release a new class to go featuring the Greatest Adventure stamp set. Um, as you can see, it's a single image of a train locomotive, so super easy to stamp with basic gray and or black, um, some fun sentiments, but of course you can always switch out sentiments for um, your choose own for your own stamps of your choosing. Um, but in this set, or in this class, you'll make a set of six different cards. So I love the set and kind of designed it so that um, if you purchase the class or the PDF, um, you'll have six different card sketches to replicate in the future. You can find information on that on my website, stampinpeace.com. Um, just look for the post, Greatest Adventure Class to Go. Um, let's see. Oh, I've got people from all over today. Washington, South Carolina, Maine, Fairfield, Ohio, right in Cincinnati. Sharon's on my team. So, okay. Any other announcements? Oh, one more. Um, Tomorrow, July 31st, is the last day to take advantage of Stampin' Up's bonus day coupon earnings. So for every $50 in Stampin' Up order, you get a $5 coupon code. And then August 1st through, let's say, 30th, does the August have 30 days or 31? 30 days has September, April, June, November, or 31, I think. So the whole month of August, you can redeem your coupon codes. All right, so that's a good thing to look forward to as well. Um, I'm ready to flip my camera around now so we can get started making today's cards. While I'm doing that, would you please share this live video and invite others to join us this afternoon? Oh, I see lots of hearts and thumbs ups. Thank you so much. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Slip my glasses back on so I can watch comments. Again, um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using the Choose Happy stamp set. And if you'll notice down here, it has this $1 million icon. This stamp set, whenever uh, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator achieves $1 million in personal career sales, they get treated to um, 
an achievers retreat in Utah. And one of the things that they get to do is help design a stamp set. And this stamp set, I'm proud to say, was designed by a dear friend of mine, Renee Conkey. Her business is called Water City Stamping. She's out of um, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, I believe. But any, anyways, Water City Stamping. Um, and I think it's fabulous. And the most wonderful thing about this is all the mixing and matching. It's got some real basic, cute, simple images and then all these different words that you can combine to go with the images or in combination with themselves. Um, trying to think here. Happy summer, right? Fun card for a child who's just enjoying the summer adventures. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, happy anniversary, boo, hello autumn, that sort of thing, okay? So I know with the last couple Facebook Lives, um, I did not have any giveaways. I was not making cards because I was showing you how to decorate um, your envelopes with either designer series paper or ink and markers. So I didn't have any cards to give away, but stick around because I am giving away cards at the end of this um, Facebook Live. And to do that, I always give some kind of code word or phrase for you to put in the comments to have your name put into the drawing for the cards. All right, so let's get started. Enough of me talking. And I'm going to pull out this envelope too so I remember to stamp it. The first card, I'm going to make a birthday card, okay? And I've already die cut some squares. These are from the Stylish Shapes dies, one of my favorites. Um, they have banners, circles, and squares. Great, great set of dies. I use them all the time. And I'm first going to be stamping some images with my black Memento ink. And since I'm making a birthday card, the one image I chose, I want some scrap paper here. I thought I inked that up a little too much. Okay. With these photopolymer stamps, you really don't need to push hard in your ink pads. Okay, with the rubber stamps, we've always been taught tap, tap, tap. You don't need to do quite that much with the photopolymer. So just a light tap or two will do it. And I'm actually going to stamp three candles. And then on one of the other smaller squares, I'm going to stamp this flower with leaves. And then let me close this up because somehow I always tend to make a mess with this memento. And then on the large square, I'm going to stamp happy birthday. And this I'm going to stamp in Shy Shamrock. And I'm gonna get try to get this. Whoops, that was upside down. Good save there, wasn't it? So happy and then birthday right underneath it. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is color. Whoops, use the other tip. Color my images. So candle flames and the petals on the flower, I'm going to color with the dark shade of Daffodil Delight. Stampin' Blends. And the center of the flower I'm coloring with dark Calypso Coral. Yes, Calypso Coral. And then I'm going to just color in my candles. 
So the color scheme here is Daffodil Delight, Calypso Coral, and Shy Shamrock. Sometimes when we get these teeny tiny images, we don't really know what to do with them. They're kind of, um, what do I want to say? You, you take one look or one quick glance, and for me, maybe you feel differently, but for me, it's a little overwhelming because I think, okay, there's so many words, so many images, where do I start? And to be honest, I had not even used this stamp set yet, and I've had it since May. And I initially bought it because it's really cute. And my second reason for buying it was that it was designed by my friend Renee Conkey. So I thought, well, of course I need to get that and show it. But I had not used it before today. So if you've got a stamp set or a bundle on your shelf and you haven't used it, follow my lead here. Pull it off the shelf and start designing. Start making something, anything. Oops, I forgot to color the leaves. Let me do that. So this is light shy shamrock and I'll just go over the center a little bit with the dark shade, adding a little more dimension. You can also color with your Stampin' Write markers if you prefer those. So I've used um, Shy Shamrock DSP and it measures, let me double check, four and three quarters by three and a half inches. It's one of my favorite um, uses for this clear glass mat is I have the dimensions along the left side and the bottom. So it's always easy for me to do a quick check of my measurements. Then I'm mounting it onto basic white cardstock that measures five by three and three quarter inches. And my card base is Shy Shamrock as well. I'm using lots of Shy Shamrock today. I should say on the first two cards anyways. And then of course, I always like to put a white or neutral, or very light cardstock on the inside. Makes writing and reading messages easy. There's card number one. Now I haven't decorated my candle or my envelope. So let me do that with some candles because it is a birthday card. And last week we talked about no naked envelopes, various ways you could um, decorate your envelope and stamping an image in this bottom left corner is just one of them. Probably the most common way to decorate your envelope. Maybe because I find it to be the fastest way. Okay, so there's the first card made with the Choose Happy stamp set. All right, that will be one I'm giving away at the end. And then the next card, I'm using the same color combination, but making a totally different happy birthday card. Notice that um, I am using my Stampin' Pierce mat to stamp on because this is a photopolymer set, meaning all of the stamps are see-through, they're clear, they're made of photopolymer. So the first thing I'm going to stamp is my sentiment. 
and I'm going to stamp with Calypso Coral. And I'm just going to stamp Happy Birthday on this banner. This banner was also die cut using the Stylish Shapes dies. Again, it's got the banner shapes, circles, and squares in it. All different sizes of those shapes, too. So um, I think in all of them, there's four different sizes of the shape. So I'm going to set this aside. And then I'm going to stamp my basic white. This measures four and three quarters by three and a half. I will be stamping off the edges a little bit. So that is why I'm using some scrap paper. And I'm not going to cover the entire piece. Oops. But I'm going to randomly stamp a number of these flowers. So that's why I'm twisting and turning. I want it to appear kind of random. Um, and I probably should have told you that my plan is I will put my sentiment right about there, okay? So I wanted to make sure I had enough of the flowers around. You know, I'm gonna put just a wee bit more in this corner, maybe like that. And now I'm ready to color. I'm going to color the flowers the same way as I did on the first card. The petals are the Daffodil Delight Dark Shade Stampin' Blend. Um, the flower centers will be Calypso Coral and the leaves will be Shy Shamrock. The images are real basic, clean lines, so it's easy to color them quickly. And you could consider these cards simple stamping, just stamps, ink, and paper, right? Not a lot of extra die cut pieces, embossing, that sort of thing. Just real simple, stamps, ink, and paper. Some people will refer to SIP cards. That's what this is, stamps, ink, and paper, SIP, simple stamping. So never feel that you have to always be real elaborate with your cards. In fact, if you've been following me for any length of time, um, you know that I like to do easy to make wow cards. They're easy to make, but leave people saying, wow, I love that. You could also cover the entire piece of cardstock so that it almost looks like um, a piece of pattern paper, designer series paper. In fact, you could do an entire sheet of cardstock and then cut it to make several cards. So again, the center of the flowers is being done with Calypso Coral. And then I'll finish off the leaves with Shy Shamrock. Now, as I'm coloring this, take a look at the different images and tell me what kind of cards you would make. 
using these different images and mixing and matching the words. These small images are also nice to use as um, accents or embellishments on scrapbook pages. You know, when you just need a little added something to your scrapbook page, a lot of these images would work really well. Okay, so I have that. Let me get these things out of the way. And now it's time for me to put my card together. So I'm going to mount this four and three quarter by three and a half inch piece of white cardstock onto one that measures, let's see, um, three and three quarter by five inches. And then um, I am using a Shy Shamrock card base. So I wanted this to pop off just a little bit better. Um, Tina's asking, and I'm not sure if you're asking about here or when I did the envelope, will um, the Stampin' Blends bleed through? It's okay because I'm mounting um, my color piece on cardstock, but if you're talking about the envelope, it really doesn't until I put the the card in there it doesn't but if you're worried about that just slip a piece of scrap paper or something in there so that it doesn't bleed through to the back okay that's what I would do oh Don Donna I am thrilled you are to know that I've inspired you and you're doing one of my card sets, awesome. Okay, so the black has just a very small border, so that is um, three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. Three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And you'll see how that tiny border of black really helps this pop off the card base. See that? And I think I'm gonna pop this up on dimensionals. Oh, I know one thing I forgot to do. And I have them sitting right here. Because these flowers just like look like they're floating in air, I want to add just the slightest bit of color by adding some splatters of, what is this, pool party. All right, so I've got the dark pool party Y tip open and I just tap it with the other stamp and blend. And then my sentiment I'm also popping up on a dimensional. And there's my second card. So here are my two happy birthday cards with the choose happy stamp set. Let's see what you all said. Did you um Put some ideas here. Nope. Oh, come on, ladies. Yeah, tell me what cards you would make using this stamp set. And I'm going to go right on because I've missed making cards with you. It was fun showing you the different ways to um, decorate your cards with DSP ink and markers. But I kind of missed making cards with you. Oh, I forgot to stamp the envelope. Nobody told me that. Goodness. Go ahead and do that right now. And I'll quickly color it. And then whoever wins today's cards will also get 
a de decorated envelope for you to mail it in. Beth really likes the penguin. Yes, that would be fun for sending any kind of card in the winter months. It would be fun to use on a scrapbook page of like a winter scene or kids sledding, that sort of thing. Okay, so there's that envelope. Let me make sure I get these all in the right place. What did I do with my other envelope? Here it is. Okay. Make sure I have everything. All right. Now I'm good to move on. Oh, did I? Ladies, I'm kind of off today. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I'm off. Anybody else terribly distracted by the Olympics? I love watching the Olympics. I love hearing people's stories. Um, everything that's happened and how they've gotten to where they are. I love learning about um, the host city, things like that. And I'm telling you, everywhere you look, if you're on the radio, you hear about it. If you watch TV or turn on social media, Facebook, anything, there it is. It's so distracting and I get sucked in. So, okay, let's make another set of cards. And again, I need my mat. And this I'm doing a little differently. Put these away. I'm gonna need my daffodil delight. So I'm going to first stamp some of the bumblebees. Somebody mentioned, where did it go? Somebody mentioned. The apple would be cute. Thank you, Len, for um, for teachers going back to school or in the spring when they have um, Teacher Appreciation Week, right? Or end of the year thank yous. But I love the idea of sending the teachers a little card or note or gift at the beginning of the school year, wishing them well, wishing their students well. Great idea, Len. And I'll put one here. And one, maybe just a little straighter there. And then I'm a little overwhelmed with the number of stamps today. Oops, wrong color. I want this in yellow. So I'm going to stamp Be Happy. And I'm going to place the word happy first because it's larger and takes up more space, and then it'll be easier for me to see where I want the little word B, B-E-E. -E. I'm going to color these real fast, and I have a trick for coloring these Bs that I think you'll like. So I'm using Daffodil Delight Dark Shade, and then I'm taking the light shade of Pool Party, and watch what I do. Um, these bees here, their wings are just white. I want them to look transparent, but I want to give them a little color. So just very lightly, I'm not even coloring in the whole wing. I'm just adding a couple of strokes of the light pool party shade. Can you see that? See the difference it makes? And again, I didn't even color them all the way in. So on these next two cards, my um, dimensions are the same as the pieces in the first two cards. So now one difference is on this larger square, I am putting that on a dimensional as well. On my first card with this layout, I adhered it right to um, the DSP that it went on. And here I'm just using plain Daffodil Delight. You could even run this piece of, um, 
You could even run this piece of cardstock through an embossing folder to step it up a bit. All right, then I'm mounting this onto basic black cardstock, three and three quarters by five inches. And then putting the layers onto a Daffodil Delight card base. I agree, Tana, T Tina. I agree, Tina. A really good variety of images and uh, words to mix and match. It takes you through a lot of occasions and reasons for sending cards. Love it. And, you know, it's nice to have dies and punches and all the other accessories and tools. But it's also nice sometimes to just get right down to the basics, stamp, ink, and paper. And yes, the bee is super cute, Len. All right, and let's put a bee, where did it go here? On my envelope. And quickly color it. Isn't that cute? Be happy. This is a good card to send for any reason at all. Okay. It seems like these are the types of cards that I send to my Emily that lives um, a couple hours away. And um, I don't see her as much as I see Andrea and John. But this is a nice one. It's just, be happy. I'm thinking about you. You make me happy. That sort of thing. Right? Okay, and for the next card, again, I'm using, I'll just drop my dimensionals on the floor. I'm using the same layout as I did the first time. I'm going to stamp my sentiment first. And again, it's going to say, be happy. And I'm starting with the larger word. Because again, that helps me... Um, with the placement. Of the smaller word. I know how it's all going to fit on there. Need some scrap paper again. And this time I'm stamping, randomly stamping the bumblebees. I'm going to get this out of the way now. What about the pumpkin? Notice here there's a jack-o'-lantern face for the pumpkin. Or the smiley face, you could put that in a heart or in the sun or any one of these. And again, this is going to look kind of random. So you'll see me flipping and turning my stamp. Actually, I'll be seeing Emily um, in a couple of weeks. I told her I need need some Emily time, just some one-on-one, -on -one, mom and daughter. Um, usually when she's here in Columbus, the rest of our family lives here in Columbus. So um, a lot of times when I do see her, the whole family's together, and that's great. <laughs> that's really great, don't get me wrong. Um, and we share her when she's here. But sometimes I just like to have a little one-on-one -on -one with her. Because I get that with Andrea and Riley and, and even my son-in-law at times. 
or my sister, but I don't have as much one-on-one -on -one with Emily. So I'm going to spend a, a whole weekend, long weekend, with her in Cincinnati, and I can't wait. I haven't done it in a while. I used to do it more, but since Andrea and John had the baby, um, Emily comes here to Columbus more often. All right, remember those wings that I said? I want them to look transparent, but I don't want them to be white. Again, just a few strokes of this light pool party stamp and blend will do that for me. I'm not even coloring in the whole wing. Okay, I'm not even using or coloring in the whole wing. Um, somebody's asking, am I using the cleaning cloth that comes with the glass mat for the cushion? I'm not because really I just use that um, as as a means of cleaning the surface or cleaning my stamps. I either use the stamp and pierce mat. We've had this for a while. I think it's about $6. It's in the annual catalog or probably easier to find online if you look up stamp and pierce mat. The other thing I often use for some cushion under the photopolymer stamps is my um, sil silicone craft sheet. So this is good when you're gluing things and you don't want the excess glue getting on your work surface, but it also is just enough cushion to help with the um, photopolymer stamps. I think I would say the stamp and pierce mat would be my first choice for using under the, um, or when stamping with the photopolymer stamps. A lot of times I pull the silicone craft sheet. Um, it's just a little quicker and easier, takes up less space, that sort of thing. But if I had to choose just one for that very purpose of using, of stamping with photopolymer stamps, I would choose the stamp and pierce mat. It's a little thicker. And again, I'm just adding a tiny bit of color to the background by splattering some of the dark pool party color. Okay, can you see that? It's very subtle, but it adds just enough color that things don't look like they're floating in air or floating on the white. And then look what I did here. And this was a last minute decision when I was designing. I decided to pull in more of that pool party color by using the pool, car pool party cardstock to mount the stamped cardstock on. Because when it comes to bees, we're always doing the Daffodil Delight and the Basic Black, aren't we? This changes it up a little bit. Lynn, I will mention too, you talked about the cleaning cloth. I have the Simply Chamois, that stamp over here and I'm using right now, but I also use this for the same purpose. Just like the Simply Chamois, when it, they dry, they get hard. Same thing with this, it gets hard. So this really would not work for um, stamping on top of, because you can't have it damp and you can't have it hard like that and stiff. Okay, so I'm going to add my layers to the front here, and I think I'll just lay them flat this time. And then I will pop up, where do my dimensions go? On the floor. I'll pop up the sentiment down here. just like that. And then of course, four inch by five and a quarter white for the inside. 
You know, and each time I pulled my envelope out thinking, well, then I will stamp the envelope at the same time as I stamp my card pieces. And not once did I do that, did I? <laughs> oh, well. Sometimes you're just moving along and you kind of get to that autopilot stage. And then you don't do things quite as planned. Okay, so let's pull all four cards back in. So two Be Happy cards. Alrighty. And then I've got two birthday cards. And these used the same card layouts, right? But you can see they, they really, if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't even be thinking about two card layouts for these four cards. You would just be thinking four different cards. But notice the layout. So this gives you um, some good idea of two easy to replicate layouts. And you can change the sizes if you need to, um, to accommodate whatever you want. You can make the cards smaller. You can make larger cards if you want. Um, I just made the standard A2 size cards. The other thing you can do, notice I've changed up DSP and cardstock for this layer. Um, I changed up how I showed or adhered my squares from the first card to the second one. The other thing is you could change up the shape. Instead of using um, squares, use circles. We've got lots of circle punches, um, a great set of circle dies in the Stylish Shapes dies. You wouldn't even have to use circles or squares. We have lots of other fun shapes of dies that would work with these images as well. Um, Lori, it's hard for you to do random. You know, I get you. I get you. And the longer we've done stamping, the harder it is to do simple. And that's why I like to show it sometimes. Just simple stamping. Stamps ink and paper. I guess I did um, use um, one die set. But really, I mainly, it's stamps, ink, and paper, not getting real fancy, okay? But yes, it is hard. And some people do, um, and yes, I make some fancy cards now and then, but my style is more on the simple end, easy to make, quick to make, but give a wow impression. Um, but really, when I think about Going back to the very basics, ran, stamping random can be tricky, can be hard. It, um, sometimes it's tricky how much is too much. Should I add more bees? Should I have them farther apart? Um, should I put them closer together? That sort of thing. So when I'm doing random, sometimes it's nice, if especially if it's a stamp I have not worked with before, I like to use a piece of scrap paper or typing paper, something like that. Not typing, nobody types nowadays, do they? Copy paper, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, and that can help with random stamping. I wanna say, I, I think I saw another question back here that I may have missed. Oh, Donna, that's funny about the fingerprint on the cards. Um, let's see. Apples would be cute. I thought I missed a question. Maybe not. Oh, we talked about um, using Stampin' Blends on envelopes. Do they, I guess that maybe that's what the question was that I'm thinking of. So we talked about that. If you're worried about Stampin' Blends leaking through when you're um, coloring on envelopes. Um, I got lucky and, and it might, depending on what you're stamping, maybe something larger would have a tendency to um, 
leak through. But if you're worried about it, just slip a piece of scrap paper down into that corner and you'll be good, okay? All right, I answered the question about the cleaning cloth, the cushion for photopolymer stamps. Okay, I think we're good. So final reminder, oh, um, choose happy. That will be our code word for today. If you would like to have your name put into the drawing to um, possibly win one of the cards made in this Facebook Live, type in the comments now, choose happy. Choose happy. Okay. Um, not real creative, but it helps us remember the names of the stamp sets, doesn't it? Um, and a final reminder, tomorrow, July 31st, is the last day to earn bonus coupons that can be redeemed next month with your Stampin' Up! orders. Um, also, check out my newest class to go, Greatest Adventure, featuring the train. They make great, um, they're great masculine cards. Um, they use, let's see, smoky slate, basic gray, black, white, and silver. So check that out on stampinpeace.com. And I will see you on Thursday for some more creative inspiration. 2 p.m. Eastern time right here at Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave. Have a great night, everybody. Um, and go USA!